Good morning and welcome to Sunday service. It was really good to see many of your faces this week as I got to see you guys over uh, video. And I really hope and pray that we can really gather together in person to worship God. But until then, uh, we can still gather together like this and we can still worship God with the same energy and with the same heart. So let's do that together this morning. Let me just quickly pray for us and then we'll get into a time of praise. Let's pray together. God, thank you so much for allowing us to worship you in this way. We thank you that even through uh, watching and having service online, we can still uh, praise you and worship you. Lord, I ask and pray that you will be with all the students today who are gathered to worship, that they will not be distracted. They will learn to focus on not only praising you, but also receiving the word from you today. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, this time let's get together. Let's all stand up and let's sing praises to our God. God made me who I'm meant to be. He loves me just the way I am. God made me who I'm meant to be. His dream for me is so amazing. For this simple reason. To be me, whoa, whoa, my God watches over me, whoa, whoa, I feel like royalty for this simple reason. As we continue in our worship, let's all recite the Apostles' Creed together. Are right, you guys ready? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. During the month of August, we'll be focusing on the theme of creativity. Creativity. We define creativity as imagining what you could do because you are made in God's image. Imagining what you can do because you are made in God's image. Can we all say this together? So when I say creativity, you guys will respond and tell me what that word means. Okay? You guys ready? Creativity. Imagining what you can do because you are made in God's image. Can we say that one more time? Creativity. 
imagining what you can do because you are made in God's image. Yes, friends, we are all made in God's image, and God is indeed the creator of all things. And for our time together this morning, I want us to look all the way back in the very first book of the Bible. Anyone know what that book is? Genesis, yes, Genesis. We'll be reading from Genesis chapter 1. Uh, we'll only read just one verse, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, but I want us to look at the whole creation story together. So what we're going to do is first, let's look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. So let's open up our Bibles. If you have your Bibles, please turn to Genesis 1, chapter, uh, chapter 1, verse 1. That's the very, very first book and the very first chapter and the very first verse of the Bible. Let me know when you're ready. You guys ready? Okay, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. It's a very short verse, so we're going to read it all together. As loud as you can. Ready, said, go. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Can we read it once more? Ready, go. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. This is God's word. Thanks be to God. Uh, what we're going to do is going to watch this video that describes and that shows us in detail the whole creation story, and then we'll come back together, okay? All right. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was empty, formless, and dark, but the Spirit of God was there. On the first day, God said, let there be light. And God saw that the light was good. Then he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness night. On the second day, God said, let there be a space to separate the waters of the heavens from the waters of the earth. God called the space sky. On the third day, God said, let the waters beneath the sky flow together into one place so dry ground may appear. God called the dry ground land and the waters seas, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the land sprout with every sort of plant and tree and God saw that it was good. On the fourth day, God said, let lights appear in the sky to separate the day from the night. God made two great lights, the sun for the day and the moon for the night. He also made the stars. God set these lights in the sky to light the earth, and God saw that it was good. On the fifth day, God said, let the waters swarm with fish and other life. Let the skies be filled with birds of every kind. And God saw that it was good. On the sixth day, God said, let the earth make every sort of animal. God made all sorts of wild animals, livestock and small animals, each able to have babies of the same kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make man in our image to be like us. So God created man in his own image. He formed man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into man and a man became alive. Then he saw that the man needed a helper, so God put man into a deep sleep, and while he slept, God took one of the man's ribs, then God made a woman from the rib and brought her to the man. Hello. Hi. Then God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and rule over it. Rule over the fish in the sea. Hello, man. The birds in the sky. Hello, bird and all the animals that scurry along the ground. <laughs> then God said, Look, I have given you every plant throughout the earth and all the fruit trees for your food, and I have given you every green plant as food for all the animals. Then God looked over all he had made, and he saw that it was very good. So the creation of the heavens and the earth and everything in them was done. So on the seventh day, God rested from all his work, and God blessed the seventh day and said it was holy. Wow, 
Wow, that's such an awesome video that shows us very clearly what each day represents, right? Fritz, can you remember uh, what God created each day? Let's let's go through it one by one. Day one, what did He create? He created, yes, light and darkness. He separated light and darkness. He called it day and night. What happened to day two? On the second day, He separated the sea and the sky. So first day, He separated light and darkness. Second day, He separated sea and the sky. What about day three? Anyone know day three? God separated the land from the sea, and then he filled the land with plants. Now, what about day four? Anyone? Day four, God filled the sky that he separated from light to darkness. God filled that sky with sun, moon, and stars. Sun, moon, and stars. And then now day five, God filled the sea and the sky with fish and birds. What about day six? Day six, God filled the land with animals, and he also created Adam and Eve. Remember that? God created man and woman in his image. And lastly, in day seven, what did he do? What did he create? God rested. Now, some people say, oh, it's just six days of creation, and day seven, he rested. But I would say seventh day is also part of his creation. I do believe God created rest. So praise God and thank God for rest because we all love to rest, right? Right? God rested on the seventh day. Good job, guys. Friends, do you know what the very first word, action word, or verb is in the Bible? If you look back at Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, the, verse, the passage that we read this morning, it says, In the beginning, God did what? Yes, God created. God created the heavens and the earth. Now, this is interesting because like many of us who enjoy art, uh, from what I can remember, many of you guys shared that you guys wanted to grow up and be artists. That's awesome. But did you know that the very first artist in the Bible is God himself? Even that desire that we have, the desire to and wanting to become an artist is resembling God's character because he was the very first artist in the entire universe, God himself. God was the first ever artist. And what did he do? With all that creativity, with the limitless creativity, what did he do? He created the heavens and the earth. That means God created not only heaven and earth, but everything in between heaven and earth. Yes, God created everything, even you, even me, even your brothers, your sisters. God created every living creature in this world, even spiders and even mosquitoes. Friends, we can see right away from the very beginning in the Bible that God was the author of creation. He created everything out of nothing. He didn't just fix or modify the world that was broken, or he didn't change a few things around. No, God created everything out of nothing, from the smallest molecule in the world to the largest planet in the universe. God created everything. What makes it even more special about his creation is that out of all the things that he has made, there's one thing that he made according to his image. There's one thing that he made in his image. What is that? Yes, humans. God made animals, birds, sun, moon, stars, but none of that was made in his image. There was one thing, as we can see in uh, Genesis 1.27, he has made humans in his own image. Friends, that's a very good and very special privilege. But the sad reality is that we often forget this. We often get so busy living the life that we have that we forget where we came from. We often instead admire things that are created rather than admiring the creator himself. Like maybe when we go to the mountains in Vermont or in New York and we see just how beautiful it is, how massive the trees are or like when we go to the ocean and we see just how beautiful it is how crystal clear the ocean water is or when we look up in the sky and see the stars and we marvel at just how shiny the stars are and all these little things we marvel at the created things but we don't really spend time marveling at the creator himself likewise back in the day people were also focusing on the created things rather than the god himself um, they used to worship the sun, they used to worship the moon, they used to worship even the stars. Not only that, 
Remember, remember that time in Exodus when the Israelites were rescued from God, uh, rescued by God from Egypt, and when they got to the wilderness, and when Moses went up to the mountain to receive the Ten Commandments, what were the people doing down there? They made a golden calf. They created their own God because they thought that was a better version of God than the Creator God Himself. Isn't that messed up? Instead of worshiping and thanking God. Um, the Creator Himself, who not only created them, but rescued them out of Egypt and out of slavery, they thought it was a better idea to worship something that they created instead. Maybe for some of us, we have a different kind of struggle. We might have a hard time believing that we are created in God's image. When we look at ourselves in the mirror, maybe we have a hard time believing that we are lovable. Maybe we have a hard time loving ourselves. Or maybe we have a hard time loving others. We might think that we're not good enough. We're not pretty enough. We're not smart enough. We're too much of a troublemaker. Or maybe we think that about other person, our siblings, our friends. However, let's be reminded, friends, today that God made us in whose image? In His image. And God made that person that you might not like in whose image? In God's image as well. That means in, I, in His eyes, you are perfect no matter what anyone else says. Let's say that again. You are perfect no matter what anyone else says. Friends, I love the creation story. I love reading Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2 because it always reminds me where I came from and what I was created for. God didn't have to create us. God didn't have to make us in his, his image, but He created us in His image, and He gave us a purpose. And that purpose is to know God and to make Him known to others. To know God and to make Him known to others. So friends, let's remember that God created us in His image, and He loves us no matter what. So let us worship God by getting to know more of who He is, we can do that by reading the Bible. We can do that by praying to Him, imagining He's right next to you and just talking with Him and just sharing with Him what's going on in your life and in your heart. And also by sharing with others who do not yet know God about just how awesome our God is. So let's do that this week. This week as we reflect and remind ourselves of Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2 of the creation story, let's be reminded that God created us in his image for the purpose of making Jesus or making him known, making God known, and to know God more personally in our lives. God created us in his image to know God and to make God known to others. Amen. All right, let's pray together. Let me pray for us. God, thank you so much for allowing us to revisit a familiar passage in Genesis. Lord, we admit that the Genesis creation story, we've heard it so many times, but we uh, confess that a lot, a lot of times it doesn't mean much for us in our lives. May we be reminded today that it is so meaningful, that it is so special, it is such a great honor and privilege to be reminded that we are made in your image and that we are perfect in your sight, no matter what anyone else says. And because of that, we pray that you will encourage us and strengthen us to know you more each day, and to make sure that people around us know more of you through us as well. We love you, Lord. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, friends, at this time, let's go into a time of offering. Uh, as you guys know, because of the COVID pandemic, we can't physically give our offerings, but we could at least give ourselves as an offering to God. So can we do that together? Let's pray this prayer together. Lord, I give myself, or I give my life, as an offering to you. Let's say that one more time. Lord, I give my life as an offering to you. Amen. Amen. All right, friends, let's stand up. Let's get ready for our closing praise. But before we do that, I have, a, I have one announcement. Uh, as I shared with some of you guys during this week through the video, uh, we will have, or we are planning to have VBF this summer. Now, VBF is going to look a little bit different than regular because we can't, come, we can't join together in church. So we're going to do things online. We're going to do things a little bit differently, but um, uh, be alert, uh, be um, just stay alert. Uh, we will let your parents know and we will let you know as soon as we find out exactly when we're going to do it. It'll be sometime in August, uh, but we will make sure that you guys receive everything that you need so that we can have VBF 
even at home this this year okay so um, be on the lookout for that and i will see you guys again next week but until then uh, i hope you guys are safe uh, and let's close together uh, by singing uh, this song to our god who is the creator and the author of our life let's sing the song together <laughs> Before even time began, my life was in His hands. He knows my name. He knows my every thought. He sees each tear that falls in tears. Let's close together with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is done in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and glory forever. Amen.